Now, today is the second day of the Judicial Service Commission's interviews for various vacancies in the judiciary. The commission has shortlisted four candidates for the two positions available at the Constitutional Court. Let's now get some analysis on what interview processes have been followed through so far. For that, I'm joined by Ndando Sindane, a lecturer in the University of Free State Faculty of Law. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for your time. Now, the day's interviews, as we perhaps reflect on what occurred yesterday, the interviews were really marked by even-handed chairing and decorum up until tensions started to rise when Unterhalter, uh, Judge Unterhalter was in the hot seat, grilled uh, for not recusing himself in a separate matter. When it comes to that process and how it unfolded, what was your analysis of it? Look, uh, good afternoon to you and your viewers. I think uh, I must say that the, the process this time was less um, rowdy than the processes relating to the interview of the Chief Justice position. Um, but I don't think that the, it is maybe the right way to frame it and say there were tensions. I think the questions that were asked to uh, Justice Hunter Holter were very necessary questions. And uh, it's very important because it, 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 it speaks to what our courts should be about, justice, fairness, and questions of recusal. Uh, you will remember last year that uh, we had uprisings in July because uh, Judge Zondo, Justice Zondo was asked to recuse himself and he didn't, and it culminated in a ripple effect that led to President Zuma getting arrested and the, upri the uprising that happened after that. So questions of Judge Anta Halter having to, to recuse himself are very, very important questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I make mention of, of tensions because initially the commissioners had agreed that uh, Anta Halter would uh, answer some of those questions on Wednesday up until Minister Lamola spoke about the, the time frames. As we take stock of the processes that followed and the manner in which they occurred. What was your take on that? Look, um, I think, for, 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 for example, when Commissioner Mbusono DSC raised the question to Judge Antahalt, it was a very fair question, uh, but I was a bit uncomfortable with uh, Chief Justice Zondo's initial handling of the matter because uh, Ju Chief Justice Zondo then actually said that, in fact, uh, what behaved in a manner that wanted to somehow excuse Anta Halter because his words were a judge would not uh, sit in a matter where he knows where he has to recuse himself. So for me, that was an area of discomfort because the question from Commissioner Nogies was a fair one. And uh, the chairperson, Chief Justice Zondo, should have actually uh, allowed uh, the, the candidate or the applicant to respond to it. And in fact, if you remember correctly, Justice Panta Hunter actually responded to it to say that if indeed I sat in two cases where I was not supposed to sit, then that is uh, unacceptable. And what do you make of the fact that uh, he's been excluded once again? Look, uh, I, 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 am, I am against this uh, fetishization around uh, Justice Anta Halter. Uh, I, I don't think that we should actually dwell on him as an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, what we should ask is, was the process fair? And if our response that, the, that indeed the process was fair, then we should wish those candidates well who have been nominated and will eventually be appointed into the Constitutional Court. I think that we should trust the process in this instance and uh, have a view that his time will come. It's not his time, his time will come. Mm -hmm. in, in trusting the process, do you think the JSC leadership is well equipped to choose the best judges? I, I of course, have a few reservations, like all of us. But I, I have no doubt in my mind that the JSC, uh, just like any other institution in South Africa, is, is, an, is a body that has its own challenges, but is a body also that learns from 
its experiences. Uh, I, I, I don't think there is reason for us to doubt the JSC, especially not because uh, some people are nominated and others are not nominated. It's, it's the role of it's the role of the game that others will be nominated and others will be not. Some of the, the questions that were posed, I mean, speaking to um, bank obligations, to gender transformation, uh, do you think that, uh, you know, those questions that were posed were ones that were relevant to best assess the best candidates? There are two ways uh, uh, to respond to that. One, uh, often people say that uh, we need to ask legally inclined questions uh, to test the judges on their knowledge of the law. And I, I beg to differ slightly from that. I think we need to have holistic judges, and you don't just ask judges about the law. You need to ask them about other things. You need to ask them about their views on transformation. Of course, the Constitution is quite clear on how uh, transformation specifically of the judiciary should be carried out. But it's very important to ask judges how they perceive transformation because transformation itself in South Africa is a contested concept. None of us agree what transformation is. So it's very important to pose that question. Uh, it's not gender baiting. It's one of the most important questions really that we should be discussing about, in, especially in the judiciary. What qualities do you think uh, need to be embodied here? I mean, we're talking about a, a judge for the highest court in, a land, in the land. When it comes to caliber and, and the qualities that uh, one needs to see being embodied by the chosen candidate, what would stand out for you? Look, I'll take you back, uh, and I was having this conversation with my students here at the University of the Free State. In the former interviews for the vacancy of the Chief Justice, position, rather. Uh, uh, justice Madanga said something that was very important. He said a jurist or a chief justice must, amongst other things, be an, ex an, an excellent and outstanding jurist, right? Mm -hmm. So I think one of the qualities is that when you are a, a, a constitutional court judge, you must be an academic, intellectual, and practitioner of the law not just an administrator, but somebody whose, whose, whose grasp of the law is above average or better than most. So you must, must lead intellectually. So I think for me that that is the, the main sort of requirement that I would have for somebody who wants to be in the Concord or Chief Justice or Deputy Chief Justice. Very well. Thank you so much for weighing in on this discussion. And Dando Sindane, lecturer at the University of the Free State Faculty of Law.